Hello everyone. We are starting with the yearly past papers revision of M1 Mechanics. The syllabus code is 9709 and we are looking at the first variant of November 2012. Now we won't be going over all the questions in the paper. We would just be going over the major questions in which students faced difficulty. So if I look at the first question, that is pretty straightforward. Second question is also, let's look at the third one. Let's read the question. It says a particle of mass 0.5 kg rest on a rough plane inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal where sine of alpha is 0.28. A force of magnitude 0.6 Newton acting upwards on the plane at an angle alpha from a line of greater slope of the plane is just sufficient to prevent sliding down the plane. Now, once you have read this much of the question, what is the background knowledge that you need? You need a resolution of forces. You need the concept of equilibrium. And mechanics, if we simplify it, the whole of M1 is basically about three things. It's about equation of motion. It's about F is equals to MA. And it's about resolution of forces. Of course, there is a little bit sprinkle of differentiation and integration related to kinematics. There is work energy power, but the majority of the questions, maybe 90%, 85% of the questions revolve around this. Now, we all know that if a particle is on a plane, we should draw the components and even before that one thing that i should focus on the examiner from the year 2010 onwards was a little bit hesitant about giving the angle unless the angle was some sort of like 30 degrees or 60 degrees something like that but the examiner prefers to give the trigonometric ratios instead so the examiner could give us tangent of alpha is 3 over 4. We draw a triangle, we can calculate sine alpha and cos alpha. In this scenario, the examiner has given us sine of alpha is 0 0.28. Therefore, cos of alpha would be 1 minus sine square alpha under root. That comes out to be 0.96. What is the next thing that I'm doing? I am... Are resolving the force of 0.6 Newton according to that angle alpha. So 0.6 cos alpha that is up the plane parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the plane in the direction of the resultant in the direction of the normal reaction force is 0.6 sin alpha. What else is there? The weight of the particle itself. Mg sin theta is down the plane. Mg cos theta is perpendicular to the plane opposite to the direction of the normal reaction force. So I have labeled the weight components in blue. I have labeled the force components in red. What else is there to label? I have to label the normal reaction force. And since the particle is just prevented from sliding down, it's not sliding down, it's prevented from sliding down. Therefore, friction, what's the property of friction? Friction is an opposing force it always acts parallel to the surface. So since there is a tendency of sliding down, F max would be up. Now remember this rule, any question that has something to do with friction, what is the first thing that you should do? The very first thing that you should do is to calculate the normal reaction force, which is R. R is also called the normal component of the contact force. F max is also called the frictional component of the contact force. We talked about it in one of the previous videos. You make R the subject. And this is what I get up to 4 SF after using a calculator. F max plus 0.6 cos alpha is the weight component down the plane. Make F max the subject. And after you get F max the subject, what is the most common thing that the examiner can ask? The examiner can ask for the coefficient of friction. F max is mu r, therefore F max divided by r, that is the coefficient of friction, 0.824 divided by 4.632, and you get the answer as 
one seven eight correct to three significant figures so that was the working of question number three let's move on this was the question they were asking the normal component the friction component and the coefficient of friction there was nothing special in this particular question uh, question 5 was also straightforward. Let's look at question number 6. Now, this is the paragraph of question number 6. Then I'll go to the diagram. The diagram shows the vertical cross section ABCD of a surface. BC is a circular arc. AB and CD are tangents. Uh, same horizontal level. Corresponding heights are given above the ground level. Uh, particle mass is 0.2 kg. Velocity is 8 meter per second. The parts of the surface containing AB and BC are smooth. Find the decrease in the speed of the particle P as P moves along the surface from B to C. Now, what is the first thing? The very first thing is that since AB and BC are smooth, there is no involvement of work done against any kind of resistance, any kind of friction. That means it's a simple application of principle of conservation of energy. Not so simple, but still simple compared to work energy principle. Re keep this thing in mind. I'll repeat it again. Whenever there are smooth surfaces, we apply the concept of principle of conservation of energy. What does it say? Total energy at one point is equal to total energy at the other point. For our scenario, total energy at point A, total energy at point B, total energy at point C is the same. Why? Because the surfaces are smooth. What will happen if the surface was rough? So we would say total energy at the start minus total energy at end is equal to work done against resistance. Now in this scenario, it's simple principle of conservation of energy. Let's look at the working. Total energy at A is potential at A, kinetic at A. That is 0 plus half into 0.2 into 8 square. Now keep my working in mind. Look at the simplicity of the working. I'm not using a calculator till the need arises. I'm simply writing it down. Total energy at B, that's potential energy at B, MGH, H is 2.7. Kinetic energy at B, that's half into M into V square. I have labeled this thing as U. Similarly, total energy at C, that is potential energy at C plus the kinetic energy at C. Potential energy at C is MGH, this time H is 3.0 and the velocity at particles at point C, I have labeled it as V. Now, total energy at A, total energy at B, total energy at C, they are all the same. That means if I equate the first expression with the second, I'll find the value of U. If I equate the first and the last, I'll find the value of V. Therefore, based upon this working, I find the value of U that comes out to be root 10. Based upon the same working, I find the value of V that comes out to be square root of 4. What is the difference? Square root of 10 minus square root of 4. That is our required answer. So that was the first one. Now the same diagram and we are moving further on from C till D. Let's read the question. The part of the surface containing CD exerts a constant frictional force. Nothing to do with the coefficient of friction. It's just a constant frictional force. As it moves to C from C to D and P comes to rest at D. Find the speed of P when it is at the midpoint of CD. Now, what is the first thing that I need to find? The very first thing that I need to find is that what is the work done against resistance? Now, if I start, my starting point is C. My ending point is D. I'll apply the work energy principle, total energy at the start minus total energy at the end. What is the start? C. What is the end? D. What do you think is the total energy at D? It reaches the ground level. We were measuring the height above the ground level. So at the ground level, height is zero. Potential energy, energy is zero. At the ground level, it was coming to rest. Therefore, kinetic energy is also zero. Therefore, total energy at C equals to work done against resistance. 
therefore the total energy at c was the same thing as total energy at b was the same thing as total energy at a that was 6.4 joules that thing is done now total energy at a total energy at b total energy at c is the same uh, since the total energy at d equals to zero therefore the work done against resistance according to this formula is 6.4 joules now it's a constant frictional force since we are halving the distance the work done against resistance should also be halved so instead of 6.4 we would be working with 3.2 so for the portion cm work done against resistance is 3.2 joules apply the same principle total energy at c minus total energy at m equals to work done against resistance we are measuring height above the ground level therefore 6.4 minus 0 0.2 into 10 into 1.5 how did i get 1.5 because if i apply the concept of similar triangles if i apply the concept of common sense a uh, sense i am going half the distance down therefore if i compare the two triangles what will happen the height of m above the ground would come out to be 1.5 you can try it out yourself so therefore total energy at m is potential energy at m plus kinetic energy at m that is equals to work done against resistance you do the basic math you know how to add and divide and multiply and subtract and take the square root and so on so you find the value of velocity at point m the midpoint between c and d that comes out to be square root of 2 1.4142 meters per second so that's how this question is to be done now let's move on question number seven read the question what does it say the question says a car of mass 1200 kg moves in a straight line along horizontal ground resistance is constant has a magnitude of 960 newton the car engine works at a constant rate of 17 it does not say constant it works at a rate of 17280 watts calculate the acceleration of a car it's a simple application remember the rule power is rate of work done and power is also force into velocity therefore the force produced by the engine is power divided by velocity so therefore i apply the simple application of f is equals to ma forward force minus resistive force is mass into acceleration and that simple application will give me the value of acceleration it comes out to be something second part the car passes through the points a and b while the car is moving between a and b it has a constant speed of v we all have done the concept of constant velocity means zero acceleration the same formula is there but mass into acceleration since acceleration is zero the right hand side of the equation is zero therefore power over velocity is r and i can say power over resistive force is velocity therefore i'll prove my point what the examiner has asked me to do ask the students to do v comes out to be 18 meters per second so two parts are done now let's move on to the third part at the instant that the car reaches b the engine is switched off and subsequently provides no energy the car continues along the straight line until it comes to rest at point c the time taken to travel from a to c the whole journey remember it's going from a to b and then b to c that is 52.5 seconds find the distance ac so now we are kind of back solving we'll first find the acceleration which will in fact be a deceleration because the engine has been switched off so the forward force is zero backward force is 960 the difference is mass into acceleration acceleration comes out to be negative apply the concept of kinematics your initial velocity was 18 meters per second because it was remaining it it was traveling at 18 meter per second throughout the journey it's finally come to coming to rest because of what because of this negative acceleration so i can find the time i can find the distance 
this time will be for the portion BC, this distance will be the distance of BC. So therefore, T comes out to be 22.5 seconds and the distance comes out to be 202.5 meters. This thing is done. Now what? Now what we can say is that out of 52.5 seconds, it decelerated for 22.5 seconds. That means for the remaining 30 seconds, it was traveling at constant speed. One second, it was traveling a distance of 18 meters. Therefore, 30 seconds, 30 into 18, that comes out to be 540 meters. And therefore, the total distance covered is 540 plus 202.5. That comes out to be 742.5. So that is the answer. This is the answer for the total distance traveled. And that is exactly what the examiner was asking. Let me just... Um, completely uh, explain uh, the concept of how did I get 1.5 in this particular scenario. Now let me just draw the diagram over here. The diagram is there and let me just label something. Okay now this diagram was like this. I bought. I need to pick a straight line like this like this and like this now remember this is three meters and this whole thing is whatever the distance d is there now if i place the same diagram over here just below it now we are talking about half so this is like half this is like half and this is like this okay let me make it more exact now this time this is h this is half d so therefore your working is h divided by 3 that is the same thing as d over 2 divided by d so now d d would cancel out i'll be left with half h over 3 is half and h comes out to be 1.5 so it's in my nature not to leave any stone unturned. It was simple, basic math. But still, it's worth explaining every single detail. You don't want to miss out on your grade just because of something that you might have forgotten about O-level math. So that was the video about this first variant of November 2012. Enjoy the video and take care.